the KFL campus, the enterprise of the University of the West Indies in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, launched its Golden Jubilee celebration last January with enthusiasm, excitement, and spirited self-confidence. It would be a time for praise, a time for reflection, and a time for looking fearlessly into a future fraught with challenge and uncertainty. The year began as it ought, with an ecumenical service of thanksgiving to the Almighty God for the vision and the wisdom of the founders, who in 1963 imagined the expansion of the academic enterprise of the West Indies as a lever for the upliftment of communities hitherto disenfranchised and depressed by colonialism. Indeed, throughout the year, the campus would seek to capture the spirit of gratitude of a community that wished to recognize the fortitude of its founders and the sacrifices of its stalwarts. The campus wrapped its celebration around the rally call of Prime Minister Errol Barra of Barbados, who in 1968 impressed upon the university community and the citizens in search of a better tomorrow for themselves and their children that the Kefil campus would become a path to prosperity. The questions, the questions that I am posing are these. Whose idea, whose idea was it to start a college of arts and sciences in Barbados? They found that the campus has been stretched to capacity for the whole of its existence. That's 1986-87. And the time has come for an injection of additional resources to take it beyond the margin of viability at which it has operated for so long. A distinguished lecture series early in the year provided a forum in which Professor Emeritus Sir Woodville Marshall, former principal Sir Keith Hunt, current principal Sir Hilary Beckles, and the deputy principal Professor Eudine Barato dissected the origins, development, achievements, challenges, and the contemporary formation of the campus with the scholastic rigor expected of its intellectual leaders. We see our task principally at university of promoting development. But to promote development, we need to analyze our environment, and we need to make correct analyses, and we need to be advocates of our perspectives, because there are always some fundamental issues that are facing us on which there might be contention. For example, I am of the opinion that the principal drag on Caribbean economic development at the moment is not a shortage of capital. I believe that the principal drag on our development at the moment is a shortage of critical skills. Tonight, I continue to take us beyond the crossroads. I intend to illuminate some of the lesser known byways of the campus, but which collectively create a powerful undergirding infrastructure of support for what the administrative, professional, technical, and support staff of administrators and academics do in delivering the public goods of a Caribbean university in the 21st century. With this context established, the ensuing events and activities reflected the tremendous love, pride, and the passion that have held the campus together over five decades of good times and bad. There was sport, there was entertainment, times for collegial reflection and sharing, and a time for service. And then there were times for focusing the lens on critical societal issues. We in the Caribbean seem more concerned about sovereignty when it involves fellow Caribbean states. We, however, quite willingly give up our sovereignty totally, basically, to the IMF, for instance. Several new publications were launched, giving testimony to the campus's global recognition as a leading scholastic environment and wellspring for the creation and sharing of new knowledge and the new perspectives. When we read the book Britain's Black Debt, 
we are at once seeing an argument for fairness and justice as we are also witnessing the evolution, as I may put it, of a distinct Caribbean historiography, one that justly claims its place in the historiography of, of the Caribbean written anywhere in the world. The campus's alumni brought a vibrant salute to alma mater in celebratory gatherings, lectures by distinguished graduates, and academic engagements. The year also provided the opportunity for expression of gratitude to benefactors and friends whose generosity and goodwill have supported and sustained the campus. Then there was pause for poignant reflection on the depths from which we have come as a people, led by the light of education and opportunity. Pause for remembrance of the ancestors whose dreams we now realize. And Professor Marshall will ask to tell us about the use of this space. The persons who moved and lived and occupied this space and, that have, and who have enabled a university campus to emerge out of what we call the period of barbarity. And out of that deep search of the past came an enlightening publication by historian Professor Sir Woodville Marshall, which captures in brilliant analytical detail the origins and evolution of the physical campus, its spatial and social environments, and confirm the campus space as ancestral ground. Lord, we all know Hannibal crossed the Alps. The record shows he was looking for Roman scalps. They know he used the Gauls and the Spaniards, made elephants to capture the land. But they won't tell you Hannibal was a black man. As the anniversary year neared its end, in a series of moving ceremonies, buildings were branded with the names of founders and stalwarts in visible and lasting tribute, honor, and gratitude for selfless service, dedication, and contribution. Always in the midst of the celebrations, leading the way with a maturity and a pride garnered in the trenches of long and dedicated service were our seniors, an army of unrelenting soldiers who continue the fight to see their campus moved to higher heights of engagement and achievement. We celebrated them within the pillars of a philosophy which proclaims that at Cave Hill no one retires. They merely establish a fiscal adjustment with the bursary. This was a year in which the campus found itself under the piercing glare of the societal spotlight as country and the campus debated the debt dimension of an intimate relationship going back half a century. Campus and country, politicians, pundits and professors, Students, parents and alumni spoke of justice for the poor and the financial experts spoke of fiscal frugality. But all were in agreement that a crossroad had been reached and the Cavill campus, exiting its 50th year, would never be the same. Yet, against this background of financial uncertainty, the campus experienced a monumental moment an international team of quality assurance experts having undertaken an in-depth examination of all aspects of the campus's operations recommended to the Barbados Accreditation Council that it should be awarded full accreditation in recognition of the excellence achieved as a globally respected academy. On December 18th, 
we brought to a close the program of activity by which we marked the golden jubilee of the Cayfield campus. It was a wonderful and magical year. We closed the celebration in the finest fashion we could imagine, in a facility dedicated to the creative imagination and to the memory of a great visionary, and with an address by a proud alumnus of our campus and the university, Barbados's distinguished Prime Minister, the Honorable Frundell Stewart, a man to whose intellectual acumen we will look as we prepare and position our campus for the decade ahead.